Welcome to this video. We are going to solve some problems involving rotational equilibrium, but before we start, first we have to recap something kind of simple. There are two different ways an object can move. It can have translational motion and also rotational motion. Rotational is easy. If we have a seesaw, it can move like this. Right? It can rotate. But what's translation? What's translational motion? Translational motion simply describes everything else we've considered up to this point. In other words, translational motion means it could go left or right, it can go up or down, it can move along the x or y axis, whereas rotational is moving about a pivot point. And we use that phrase, moving about a pivot point. Okay. Whenever something is in rotational equilibrium, rotational now, that means that the sum of all the torques, or what we sometimes call the net torque, is equal to zero. When the thing that's moving, or not moving, as the case may be, when the thing is in translational equilibrium, that means the net force is zero, and we're used to that. We've solved problems in the past using that fact. This problem here, number one from your worksheet, involves both, and we will use both. We have a seesaw. It is 16 kilograms big, and the 16 kilograms, uh, because of the mass, the seesaw is being pulled down by gravity. Now, where should I draw the force of gravity? Should I draw it here, here, or here? Where on the seesaw does the force of gravity act? Well, the whole seesaw is getting pulled down. Everything is being pulled down. But there is a single point called the center of mass. And the center of mass is the one single point on an extended or elongate object where gravity can be taken to act. So here's the cool thing. It says in the problem that this seesaw is supported at the center of mass by a wedge. So the point that I've drawn right there, that's the center of mass. And at that point, we can draw the force of gravity due to the seesaw's mass. So the seesaw has a mass of 16 kilograms. Therefore, the force of gravity on it is 16 times 9.8. And move this down. And we are going to use this trick, this trick that gravity acts at the center of mass. We will use that throughout the problem uh, on this worksheet, throughout all of the problems. OK, what other forces are on our seesaw? The problem says that there's a 4 kilogram block hanging 2.5 meters to the left. 2.5 meters, and being pulled down is the 4 kilogram block. That's what's pulling down, rather. So it pulls down with its gravity. So the force that it exerts on the seesaw is just mg. And then we're asked to find where must a 7 kilogram mass be placed so that the seesaw doesn't move. If we want to balance this block, then the 7 kilogram mass will have to be placed over on the right side somewhere. But the question is, how far over do we put it? I'm going to call this distance x2, and we know that this second block pulls down on the seesaw with a force equal to its weight, to its gravity. So that force is m7 times g. Gravity is equal to mg. Okay, first in part a, we have to find where it's placed. In part a, we're finding, we have to find that distance x2. We do this using the fact that the net torque is zero. If the net torque is zero, then the clockwise torques added up are equal to the counterclockwise torques. The only trick is that we have to put absolute values around the left side. Don't make those torques negative. I'm not going to write the absolute values, and I'm just going to remember to myself to make them positive, those torques on the left. The great thing about this equation right here Whenever the torques balance, you can choose any point along the object as your pivot point. Now, we know 
that the seesaw is pivoting right here. But you could actually, if you wanted, you could choose this point as your pivot point. Now that doesn't make much sense for us here. In this case, we are going to use the pivot point right there, and so we're going to balance the torques about that point. Now before we do, there's one final thing to put in. In addition to these three forces, the wedge is pushing up on the seesaw. So I'm going to call that FW, the force of the wedge. I'll spell out wedge. The wedge is this like triangular thing here at the bottom, and it pushes up, it supports the seesaw. Okay, which of these four forces, okay, we have one, two, three, four, which produce clockwise torques when we take this as our pivot point? The ones that produce clockwise torques, remember clockwise is this way, there's only one, it's this. So I'm going to put in the value of force, which is 7 times 9.8. That is acting at a distance x2 away, and then I have to multiply by the sine of the angle between the force and the distance, which is 90 degrees. Sine of 90 is 1, that's all going to go away. And I'm going to move this down so I have more room. And on the left side, I'm done. Those are the only, uh, that's the only torque pulling clockwise. There's only one torque pulling counterclockwise if we take this point in the middle as the pivot. It's the force of the smaller block. So on the right side, we put that torque. It's the force exerted by the small block. The weight is the force times the distance that that force is exerted. Uh, the distance at which the force is exerted times the sine of the angle between the two. And again, just like before, the angle between straight down and straight horizontal is 90 degrees. The seesaw is horizontal, so this angle is 90 degrees. Sine of 90 is 1. We divide both sides by 7 and by 9.8 and we get that the distance x2 is 1.43 meters. Good. I'm going to take this away and move my answer up here. That's part A. We're done. Part B says, find the value of the wedge force. Find the wedge force here. To find that, we're going to use the fact that the net force is zero on the uh, seesaw. If the net force is zero, the forces pushing up balance the forces pushing down. They all cancel each other out. Pushing up, there's just the wedge force, because there's only one up arrow in my picture here. On the other hand, there are three down arrows, and so I have to add these all together on the right side. I have 4 times 9.8 plus 16 times 9.8 plus, whoops, 7 times 9.8. And when I calculate this answer, what do I get? I get about 265 newtons. I round both of my answers to three sig figs, because when I look at the givens, they all have three sig figs. Now the only final thing worth noting, when I balanced the torques, the clockwise and cl counterclockwise torques, back in part A, I ignored the wedge force, and I ignored the force uh, of the seesaw's gravity. The reason I ignored those is because each one acted on the pivot point, so the distance of, let's see, the distance r for each was zero, and they did not exert any torque. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is solve number seven. In number seven, we're given already the three forces acting on this bar. The person is holding the bar stationary and horizontally. That means that the net force is zero, F net is zero, and the net torque is zero. And we're going to use both of those things in this video, in this problem. So the person is holding it with a hand as the picture shows. The thumb is pushing down on the far left. The finger is pushing up, uh, and then the weight of the bar acts on its center of mass, like this. Okay, we are told that the bar's mass is 3 kilograms, so I'm going to erase this, or put equals somewhere on my page, 3 times 
times 9.8. We are also told the distance between the thumb and the finger is 0.1. Now, this distance is half the length of the bar. The bar is 2 meters, so half the length is 1 meter. And we can pretty easily see that this distance would be 0.9 meters because the entire bar has to add up to 2 meters. Okay? So now we already know the three distances uh, <coughs> and we're ready to get started. Part A, oh no, the entire problem says find the force of the thumb and the force of the finger. finger. These are the unknowns. First, we set up all the equations that we have available. We look and we say, hey, the net torque is zero. That means the clockwise torque is equal to the counterclockwise torque when we add all of them up. I'm going to use as my pivot point this point. Let's see, I'll use this point right here at the far left. And I can choose any pivot point. You could choose that pivot point, this pivot point, this one, and your answer will still come out the same. So I'm going to use this as my pivot point. That means the thumb force exerts no torque because it acts on the pivot point. So what are what's, what's producing the clockwise torque? Clockwise is this way. Clockwise is being pulled by that force. So I have the product of the force times the distance where it's applied times the sine of the angle. The force exerted is just the gravity force, which is 3 times 9.8. The distance that it's applied from the pivot point is, let's see, how far? It's one, uh, 0 0.1 plus 0 0.9 so a full one meter. The distance between, uh, sorry, the angle between that distance and the force is 90 degrees because the bar is horizontal. On the right side, what pulls counterclockwise? Which force pushes this way? It's the finger force. So on the right, we replace the torque with the force itself of the finger times the distance that it's applied from the pivot point. Here's the pivot point. To get from there to the force, we move over to the right by 0.1. And again, we have sine of 90, because this angle is 90 degrees. So we solve for the force of the finger. And what do we get? Uh, this comes out to be about 293.8 newtons, or if we round for sig figs, 294. The next thing and the final thing that we do is we use this, this piece of information to, let's see, 294. We use this to solve for the force of the thumb. Okay, so I've moved my, so my answer to the previous part up to the top here, and now I'm going to find the force of the thumb. I use the fact that the up and down forces balance. In other words, now I'm using the fact that the net force is zero. I already used the fact that the net torque was zero. So what are the forces pushing up? All we have is the finger force. And pushing down, we have the thumb force, as well as uh, the gravity force on the bar. And of course, the gravity force on the bar acts at the center of mass. So I replace a finger with the value that I came up with, 290, and I use the unrounded value here. And then the thumb force is what I'm solving for. 3 times 9.8 is going to get subtracted away. And what do I get for the thumb's force? It comes out to be, let's see, about 264.6 newtons, and that rounds to about 265 newtons. I round both of my answers to 3 sig figs, because all of the givens are uh, are written with three sig figs as well. And that's how you solve this problem.